check this out. Last week was an awesome week. Um, I went home. I was super stoked. I was crazy excited. Uh, I could just see God working in you guys. I could just see him like working through you. I was really excited about it. Um, this week, I'm, I'm excited. I'm actually nervous. Uh, I usually don't get nervous when I preach in front of you because you're like my family. And I love it. Uh, so I get up here and I'm pumped up. I'm nervous tonight. Uh, and I'll tell you why I'm nervous tonight. Because tonight, we're going to talk about the sin that you haven't dealt with in your life. And everybody has some sin in their life that they haven't dealt with yet. And tonight, we're going to talk about that sin. And we're going to talk about how that sin is stopping you from growing closer to God. So I'm nervous because I hate stepping on people's toes, but that's my job. So be prepared tonight as we talk about the sin that you haven't let go of yet. All right? So are you guys ready for that? Put your seatbelts on. That's right. Uh, We're about ready to jump in a four-wheeler. We're going to be riding all over uh, the Jesus Highway tonight. Jesus, take the wheel. My message tonight, my message, that's right. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> it's funny story, I do that sometimes in the car. I close my eyes and go, Jesus, take the wheel. No, I'm just kidding. I don't do that. <laughs> Melanie would freak out. She'd be like, what do you got? But it is, it is a funny story. Every time my wife and I get in the car to drive together, shh. Every time my wife and I, we get in the car to drive together, she always tells me she has to take Germany because... My driving just makes him sick. I don't know what it is. Uh, but uh, do I make any of you sick on the church van? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. It's my driving. Though. It's my driving. It's my driving that does it. That's, you know, I, I mean, I mean, I've ridden on church buses. I never get sick. It's weird. Because my driving's crazy. I do swerve. I do swerve. I do swerve. No. The funnest thing to do in a loaded 15 passenger van is to grab the steering wheel and give it a little jolt back yeah. and forth. Yeah. There is so much sway in a 15 passenger van fully loaded. Obviously. It's almost like a like a snake slithering. I mean, it's insane. Well, you guys wouldn't experience it. I do because I can feel it on the steering wheel. You were doing donuts earlier. It wasn't a donut. You better rephrase the way you say that. It was a circle. You're going to give me fire, dude. <laughs> Here comes the sixth grader. Mom, JP was doing donuts in the church van. That's the kind of youth pastor I have. Yeah, your mom will never let you come to church again. <laughs> but yes, it's Mrs. Trey. Take Joe, can, can your son come to church? No, he can't come to church. You were doing donuts with him in the van. I like donuts. I was doing donuts. What? This is Take Joe. You misunderstood. We were eating donuts in the van. I called you out. Called him out. I didn't call. Are you Mrs. Take Joe? That's what I thought. All right. Shh. We're in Romans tonight. You got your Bibles? Do you got your Bibles open to Romans? Shh. All right. It's enough. Do you got your Bibles open to Romans 4? We're going to be in Romans 4 uh, tonight a little bit, uh, preaching out of it, sharing it. So check this out. Uh, last week we, we talked, man, we just talked about God moving. All right. Does anybody remember exactly what we talked about last week? Come on. Somebody's got it. Church. Church, exactly. Jesus. If you said Jesus, you would have hit it on the nail. Um, there we go. Jesus, it is. You love talking about. Jesus. No, last week, guys, was an awesome week. Um, we just we talked a lot about just the, the, just about what God did through the weekend, uh, winter retreat, kind of a brush up. Uh, we discussed what it was to accept salvation. You guys remember that? Remember, it was about salvation. It was a lot of us, we get saved and we just don't understand what the word salvation meant. Like we don't, we don't grasp that fully. So we talked about, what were some of the things we talked about? We talked about what? We talked about being, coming a part of the family. Yeah. We talked about God redeeming us. Right. We talked about reconciliation and we talked about becoming a new creature, creation, creature through Jesus Christ. Those are the four things that we hit on um, last week. And this week, we're going to talk about now what? Now what? Sins. So this is what happens. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a cool thing, and it's a good thing, but it's also a tough thing. You know, many of us, we go on a retreat, we go on a weekend, uh, we go for camp, uh, we go on just maybe a, a, a long uh, mission trip. And when we're there, we're, we're like totally engulfed and totally covered and everything is just Jesus, 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 Jesus. And it's just like being pounded on us. 
And it's a good thing because it encourages our spirit and it gets us really pumped up and excited. And hear me out. There's nothing wrong with emotion. Uh, God obviously gave us emotions. So he wanted us to be emotional people. All right, females more emotional than males. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That is the way that God created it. There are some of you baby girl boys in here uh, that are, no, I'm just kidding. God gave us emotions. That's right. That's right. I'm on it. I'm on it. God gave us emotion. There's nothing wrong with emotion. So this is what happens. We go. We go on these weekend retreats. We go on, on, on uh, summer camps. We come back from summer camp, and we're like high on Jesus. We're like way up here. All right, we're just uplifted. We're excited. We are just boom, pounding. We want to tell everybody about Jesus. We're excited. We're going to come on to tell our parents, man, I just got saved. I, I gave my life to Christ. I'm so pumped. You need to, you need to meet Jesus. You need to know Jesus. If you don't, you're going to hell. Like, you're just like just insane, you know? Uh, how many people went home and said that to your parents? I did. So. Uh, not this weekend, no, no, but I mean, in the past. <laughs> but I said to Jesus, you did, you're going to hell, you better fix that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always like, uh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Some of you are like, I would never say that to my parents. My mom would come across with a five finger discount on my teeth. Yeah. yeah, my parents made me go to church. <laughs> it's true. Anyways, we'll go into that later. Shh. So you're like excited. Check this out. Shh. You are excited. You're pumped up. You have this Jesus craze high. You're just emotionally on the clouds. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. That is awesome. Why? Because it, it, it helps us. It helps us get ingrained in God's word. We come home. We're, we're ready to read more of God's word. We want to share with people about Jesus. There's nothing wrong with that except for one thing is that we get hooked on emotional faith, okay? We get hooked on this crazed high. We always think that when we follow Jesus, we have to be up here following him, like in the clouds, chasing after him. And that's a really, really dangerous thing because when we're up here and in the clouds, we totally forget about everything that's down here, including, there's, including sin that's in our life. And you know what? Youth ministry, we've done it in our youth ministry. I've been in youth ministries where it's happened. We do everything we can to keep you guys up here, jumping from, from retreat to, to summer camp to rock the universe to, to retreat to, you know what I mean? We, we keep you just rolling on this emotional, crazy roller coaster going up. It looked like I was just doing a dance move there. <laughs> I am Jesus. No. Uh, you're just rolling, you know what I mean? And, and that's, that's our fault. Okay, that's how we were taught. That, that's what, I, when I went through youth ministry, that's what it was like. It was like, oh, I cannot wait for camp to get here. I can get pumped up for Jesus again. You know what I mean? And we're just like rocking it out. And then like three weeks afterwards, you're like, oh, oh. you know what I mean? Like you're just dragging. And that's the, that's, that's the one thing. I don't drink coffee. If I drink coffee, we'd be in a lot worse shape. That is the problem with emotional faith, guys. And you know what? I want to talk to us about this tonight because I want us to see that emotion and faith is important, but having emotional faith is not good. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm giving you information that adults learn after they've been saved and have grown up either in the church or just accept Christ and learn through their growth. They finally learn, oh, wow, it's, it's important for me to, to definitely be in God's word constantly instead of emotionally or instead of every once in a while i'm giving you a nugget of information the word nugget i love it <laughs> i went to a high school uh graduation one time and who was it that spoke i forget but he had 12 nuggets of truth and that was the longest graduation i was ever part of in my life <laughs> i don't remember what the nuggets of truth were but i got one nugget of truth for you tonight <laughs> and it won't take me three hours to get through um Kelsey's? <laughs> it might have been. Do you remember that? Here's Kelsey. Uh, yeah. Anyways, the problem with emotional faith is that we never, we never truly commit our life to Christ. We never truly commit our lives to Christ. When we're emotionally invested in God with an emotional high, we never truly give our life to Christ. We'll give the high, the excitement, the happy time to Jesus, but we won't give him all of us. We won't share all of it with him. That's the problem with that emotional high. We try to live for Jesus and on Jesus with an emotional high. Older students in this room, they could probably agree with me on that. 
They could easily say, you know what, growing up in youth ministry, I knew that I was more excited about that retreat or more excited about that camp or more excited about getting involved in that missions trip than I was just coming to youth group on Wednesday nights. You know, it's okay because Wednesday nights, it doesn't get old, but you come every week and it's normal. But you should be just as excited for a Wednesday night youth group as you should be for camp. You should be just as excited for opening your Bible every morning or every evening or at lunchtime as you are for every time you go to camp or you go to retreat. You see what I mean there? It should be a consistent thing through your life. It should be a consistent lifestyle instead of just these highs that you live on up and down. And there's a big problem with this type of emotional faith. And it's this. We have never dealt with the sin that's in our life. Sorry, I just drank my dinner, so I'm burping here. Yeah, I drank my dinner. We never, listen to me, when we are living from Jesus high to Jesus high, we never deal with the sin that's in our life. And the problem with never dealing with the sin that's in our life is that that sin is always floating around us. It's always there. It's always in our hearts. We are doing a good job of being above it so we don't notice it or we don't see it, but it's still there because we've never dealt with it. Salvation gives us the opportunity to have faith and hope and eternity with Jesus in heaven. But we also have a responsibility to sift through our lives and see the things that cause us and that can cause us to fall, can cause us to trip up in our walk. There are things in our lives that we know we should just say, you know what, it's time for that to go. That we, we just need to get rid of that. But instead, we just overlook it because I'm like, oh, I'm on this crazy Jesus side. That's never going to drag me down. That is never going to pull me away because I'm up here. And that's the lie with this emotional faith. And it tricks us. And, and man, it causes so much turmoil. Listen, when, when, I, when I got saved 13 years old, man, I came back on fire. I mean, like, burn people fire. I was so pumped up. I was so excited for about two months. And you know what? I never dealt with the sin that was in my life. I never got rid of that person that kept dragging me down. I never said goodbye to that girlfriend that was terrible. I never said goodbye to the shows or or to the video games or to the mouth, the dirty, filthy mouth that I had. I never finally said, you know what? It's time for me to get rid of that. Because I was trying to live on this crazy upward high. And I'd look back at it and say, it doesn't matter. I'm up here. It's never going to catch me. But over and over again, as I grew up over and over again in youth ministry and youth group, I lived from that Jesus high to that Jesus high to that Jesus high. Because what would happen is I'd be up here, and that sin would just slowly creep up, grab me, and yank me down. It'd slowly creep up, grab me, and yank me down. Over and over and over We get into this repetitive cycle of emotional high for Jesus instead of true faith for him. You know what? Living as a Christian uh, is a beautiful, amazing, powerful thing. Does that mean that it's going to be the most exciting thing in the world? No. Because you know what? You have life. You have issues. You have to still deal with people. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) It would be a much different world if you said, Jesus, I accept you. Boom. You didn't, you, rapture happened immediately. You're just gone. That's, that's not the way it works. Why? <laughs> because I don't know. We'll ask him when we get to heaven. That's right. He wants us to spread the gospel. The Great Commission is in our hands. Anyways, so we get into this repetitive cycle over and over and over again. We need to deal, guys. We need to deal with the sin in our lives. It's time for us to let go. Many of us made unbelievable decisions this past year, the beginning of this year. How are you guys doing on those decisions? Be honest. How are you doing? Maybe some of you committed. You know what? I'm going to try to read my Bible once a day. How's that going? I thought so. How about holding your tongue? How many of you are trying to hold your tongue? That's good. How's that working out? That's good. That's good. That's good. What about those shows, guys, that we shouldn't be watching? You know what I'm talking about. I'm actually doing really good at that. How are we doing? Yeah, that's good. That's good. 
That was good songs. Yeah. Music. Mu we're going to talk about music. We're going to do a whole thing on music uh, in March. I'm really stoked about it. Pastor JJ did it here. It's called Soundtrack. Um, we're going to just, we're going to tear lyrics. We're going to tear the most popular songs that you guys listen to apart. And we're going to listen to and word for word see what those songs are saying. Okay. Some of you, I doubt, have ever just took in the book or the CD. You guys don't have CDs Everything anymore. You've ever gone online and like researched the lyrics and looked at the lyrics. Anyways, that's that's for another time. That's for another time. That's for another time. <laughs> We're gonna open up some Ozzy Osbourne. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Anyways, many of us struggle with letting go. Shh. Hardest thing we struggle with as a new believer is letting go. You know, it's, it's already strange enough that we've accepted Christ and we've become a new believer. Okay, we physically, we feel different. We might not look different, but you know that there's something different about you now. The way you hold yourself is different. The way you are viewing the world is now different. The problem is, is it's so different, you're afraid to let go of things that you were used to. And see, when we're used to those things, we hold on to them. A lot of times that's sin, it's, it's being comfortable with sin, it's being comfortable with different things in our lives. So we hold on to those things. Well, tonight we're going to talk about, we're just going to let that stuff go. I'm going to challenge you in a little bit. I've got some paper and some pens up here. What I want to challenge you guys with in a little bit is, if there is something in your life that's, that's holding you back, I want you to write on this paper. I want you to crumble up and I want you to throw it at the altar up here. I want you to signify in a, in a materialistic way, I am removing this from my life and I want to get rid of it. I want to get rid of it. I, I want to do what I can to be the best believer I can, the best follower of Christ I can. Because listen, you can't live from emotional high to emotional high. You can't do it. You're going to continually get drugged down. You're going to continually get pulled down. It's important for you to remove that sin in your life that is causing you to be drugged down. It's crucial. That's, now, that, that's the now what. Now what do I do that I'm a believer? First step, let's clear out the house. Let's clear the house out. Let's clear out the temple of God. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit lives in us. Therefore, we are a temple. We are a temple where the Holy Spirit resides. Your body is a temple of the Lord's. It's time we clean that temple. It's time we clean out the trash, the grudge, the heartache, the heart, the crap, everything. It's time to get rid of it. It's time we toss it. It's time we throw it away. Last week, we learned uh, that we are become a new person that we could become a new creature when we believe in God. 2 Corinthians 5.17, you don't have to go there. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, the new life has begun. Do you hear what that, that, that first that phrase in there? The old life is gone. Stop holding on to it. It's gone. Leave it be. You ever heard that phrase, let history be history? It's gone. Stop, stop trying to drag it behind you. You know the red wagon wheelbarrows? You know what I mean? you got baggages clogged up on that red wagon. You're, just, you're trying to drag it around. Radio that radio flyer. Let it go. The Bible tells us that when you accept Christ, you become a new creature. You are a new person. Your old life is gone. Stop dragging it around with you. Just stop. You're hurting yourself. You're causing yourself to stumble. You're causing yourself to fall. Tonight we'll see that it's, it is the sin that you are afraid of letting go that is holding you down. It, it, it's not that innocent sin that kind of just pops up out of nowhere and you're just like, oh, what do I do? It, that, that's not what's causing you to stumble. It's the sin that's behind you, that's dragging you, pulling you, <coughs> yanking on you. That's the sin that's causing you to stumble. Because that all of a sudden instant sin, it's like, oh, what do I do? You usually just, okay, okay, you, God, what do I do? Okay, yeah, okay. And you get rid of it. But it's that sin that's really dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> if I see most of you walking in, I'm going to walk into one of your schools and you guys going to be like, <laughs> you know, panic attack, you know? I think I just hyperventilated. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How funny with that? Never mind. <laughs> we need to remove it. God gives us a new life. Let's remove it. <clears throat> and let's start in that life fresh. Let's start in that life excited. It's that same sin that keeps dragging you down. Tonight we'll see that our sins have been forgiven, and God has said, hey, listen, I don't see them anymore. That, that's the most beautiful thing about salvation. Prior to salvation, God can see the sin that's in our life. He sees it. It's ugly. Oh, he hates it. When Jesus covers us with his blood, 
When Jesus' salvation covers us and our separation is removed, God looks at us, he looks at our inside, he says, oh my God, that's beautiful. Look at how beautiful that is. He no longer says, oh, it's so wretched, they're so broken. He says, look at what my son has done with you. Look at how perfect he has made you. You now knew you were restored. Remember reconciliation? You've been reconciled. The friendship has been fixed. The relationship is mended. But here we are. Pulling it. Holding on to it. It's comfortable. It's worldly. It feels good. And we're just not letting it go. we got to let it go. We need to see that our salvation was given to us as a free gift. That's that's the first and most important thing that we need to realize through this whole process. When you work, what is it you get? You get what? Wages, right? When you work for something, you get a wage. Well, you, you didn't work for your salvation, okay? You hear me say this all the time. It's a free gift. You didn't work for your salvation. To understand you need to let go of the past is to understand that your past has been bought, Okay? It's like a used car. You can't sell a used car to a car dealer and then ask to keep the wheels. You, you, you can't do that. When, you, when, when it's been bought, well, you could ask for it, but I doubt they're going to let you do it. When, you're, when you have been bought with Jesus, he wants all of it. He doesn't want you to hold on to certain things. He wants you to take everything. He wants you to, to just let it go. we got to stop trying to hold on to that stuff. And we see that it's because of that free gift. We, we don't work for salvation. You didn't work for it. You, you can't do enough good to receive it. You, you can't do that. It's a free gift that was given to you by God through Jesus Christ on the cross. He paid the penalty. He paid the ransom. He gave his life so that you wouldn't have to give up yours. Okay? Physically, we'll die. No doubt about it. We're going to die. But because Jesus gave up his physical life to pay for the penalty of your eternity, you no longer have a right to hold on to your past. You no longer have a right to hold on to that sin. Let it go. When we understand that, when we grasp that, it changes our world. Because you, you're, you're, you're free. You're free. You don't have to try to hold on to it. You don't have to hold on to that the, the abuse. You don't have to hold on to the pornography. You don't have to hold on to the drugs. You don't have to hold on to the cursing. You don't have to hold on to the, the I don't know, whatever it's, you're holding on to. Stop letting it weigh you down. Stop letting it hold you down. You are now a new creature, a new creation. Man, let God just reside in you. Salvation is a free gift. We see that we cannot and should not hold on to that sin any longer. Our sin, is to, our sin is there to remind us of who we were. But see, God has come in and wiped it out to remind us of who we've become. He wants you to, to see and realize that it is time for you to give your life to him and chase after him. You know, the crazy thing about salvation is we come to God and we say, God, I want you to forgive me. God, I want to come and I want to live for you and I want to change it. I want to change. I want to chase after you. God, I want you to give me an eternity with you. But for some reason, we never say, God, I want you just to fix me. God, I want you to give me the courage to let go of my sin. I want you to give me the courage to let go of my past. I want you to give me the courage to let go of the things that are, that are causing me to be drunk down. And we ask for God's salvation, but we don't allow God to fix us. We don't allow God to come in and reveal to us the sin that's in our hearts. And tonight, guys, it's that time. It's that time for you to allow God to come into your life. Allow God to come into you and to show you that it is time. It's time to let that stuff go. When Jesus died on that cross, not that specific one, but (laughs) when Jesus hung himself on that cross, when he died for you, he pretty much said, hey, I got a broom, I got a dustpan, let's clean this mess up. Let's get rid of this stuff. He comes up beside you and he grabs a hold of that wagon, and he takes it from you and he turns around and he walks the other direction with it. He doesn't want you to be reminded. He doesn't want you to remember. 
You are now a new creature, a new creation. Stop letting the past hold you down. We see in Romans that salvation is a free gift. Romans 4, uh, verses 1 through 8 says, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this, and I'm going to give you a little history on it, because you're going to read it and go, what in the world? So let's read this, and i got a little history for you. It says, Abraham was humbly speaking, uh, Abraham was humanly speaking, the founder of the Jewish nation. What did he discover about being made right with God? If his good deeds made him acceptable to God, he would have, he would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. For the scriptures tell us, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God, who forgives sinners. David also spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. Verse 7 says, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven. Amen. Whose sins are now put out of sight. Let me repeat that one more time. That's verse 7. It says, Whose sins are now put out of sight. Yes, with joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. Abraham, humanly speaking, was the founder of the Jewish nation. God called this man out of one city, one town, one nation, and said, hey, I want you to pack up your animals, I want you to pack up your slaves, I want you to pack up your family, your kids, and I want you just to leave. Go to, I, I have a new place that I want to put you. Just leave. I know that was, Where was it at? Like Israel, I think. It was, it was kind of like that, yeah. That was the promised land, that's where they landed now, but yeah. good job. High five. <laughs> I, I just, Abraham was this guy God called out. He called him, I said, leave, I want you to go. God considered him righteous, why? Because of his faith. Because of his faith. David, same thing with David. David's beautiful when he says this. He says, all, David also spoke, this is verse 6, of this when he described the happiness of those who he declared righteous without working for it. Verse 7, I love this, I can't get it out of my mind. It says, oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Because of Jesus' salvation, your sins are put out of sight. God cannot see them anymore. He doesn't see them. He doesn't hold them against you. He has put them out of sight. So why in the world do we keep showing them to him? Why in the world do we keep pulling them back up and putting them in our lives? Why do we continue to allow them to drag us down? We need to let that go. It's time for us to deal with it. It's time for us to deal with it. God has paved the way and given us salvation. Now it's up to us to let that stuff go. He could force you to let it go, but he's given you a choice to let it go. And guys, tonight, that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to let that go. You're going to let that go. I'm not going to do anything. If God's speaking to you, if God's talking to you, if God is in your mind right now, it's popping up. You, you, you can feel it. You can see it. You know it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You better hold on to that because in a few moments, we're going to come up here. i got some paper. You're going to come up to the altar. You're going to write that crap on there. It's junk. It's sin. It's worthless. Get rid of it. Crumple that stuff up. Throw it. Just throw it in the ground. Step on it. Stomp it out. Don't be stupid about it. This isn't a show or a game. This is real life. This is serious. This is about you saying, I'm giving it up. I want to live for Christ. I want to show him. I want to give it over to him. And ask God to give you the strength to get that out, to, to just let it go. Whether it's an addiction to something, whether it's the tongue, whether you know there's something in your life it's time for you to let go of, leave it here. Leave it here so I can sweep it up and throw it in the trash. Leave it here. You guys need to let it go. You can't fix it. And all it's doing is hurting you. And God has paved a way for you to get rid of it. So do that. 1 Peter 1, 18 through 19 says, For you know that God has paid the ransom to save you from, the eternity, uh, from an eternal life 
you inherited from your, from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb. Guys, it's time to take care of that. God paid the ransom for your life. He paid for it with Jesus. Tim, you can come on up. He paid for it with Jesus. Get rid of it. Throw it out. Just get rid of it. The emotional high is fun and it's exciting. But the problem with the emotional high is that when you don't deal with that sin, it always creeps back in. It always creeps back in your life. And then you get frustrated and then you wonder what God's doing and why God isn't with you, and why God isn't helping you with this, and why God isn't around. And you feel like when you pray, he just, he's not listening to you. He's not there. No, God's there. He's given you the opportunity to deal with that sin, to get rid of that sin. And he wants you to do it. He's, it's your choice. He's given it to you to get rid of. He's washed it out. He can no longer see it. So it's time for you to let it go. Time, you can kill the light, or you can pull the lights way down. You can turn the dimmers off. You'll have to be able to read up here, but yeah, a little bit brighter would be awesome. I want to encourage you uh, as the band gets up here to worship. I want to encourage you guys. If there's something in your life that you need to get rid of, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Come up here. Come up here and and and. Write it here. I got, I got paper here. There's, there's paper all over the place here. There's some pens. Come up here. Write it down. Ask God to let it go. Ask God to forgive you of it. Write it down. Crumple it up and throw it away. Just throw it on the ground. Crumple it up real good and tight and toss it on the ground. That's you signifying that you have now removed that, that you are going to let that out. You're going to say, sin, I'm going to get out of here. Satan, I'm done with you. God, wash me. Clean me. I am ready to chase after you. Leaders, adults, you're in this too. If there's something in your life that's holding you back, get up here and throw it out. Throw it out. When you walk with Christ, he wants all of you. He doesn't want part of you holding on to that. He wants all of it. He wants all of you. Let's pray. Tim, you'll play. Guys, move whenever you're ready. I challenge you. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. I want to see the icebreaker. Come up here. Write it out. Throw it out. Get rid of it. Father, we love you. God, we thank you so much. Father, we thank you for giving us your son, Jesus, for dying on that cross, for coming and paying the ransom for our sin. But God, now I, I ask you to challenge us as a people, as believers, that you would come into our hearts right now. You would reveal to us the things we need to get rid of, the sin we need to get rid of, the dysfunction we need to get rid of. God, that you would have us just come up here, be bold, write it out, throw it down, get rid of it. God, I pray that that spirit will move, that these students will realize that it's time to have a life chasing after you and then get rid of that stuff. God, we just love you. God, thank you for your son. I thank you for this time, for giving me this opportunity. Jesus name. Amen.